processes. So the first uh, project today uh, is Telemed. Uh, in its development in Kyrgyzstan, and that is a solution that allows uh, GPs, who are sometimes very far away from the doctors, to have access to specialists thanks to their smartphones or tablets. This is a project that is led in partnership with the uh, authorities of the Capitalist Gan and the Indian NGO. And let's look at this project. In order to access care without telemedicine, the children have to travel uh, distances, sometimes hours, uh, you know, seven, eight hours, sometimes days to even reach a secondary or tertiary care hospital. Uh, through telemedicine, we aim to uh, bring this care, bring this expertise to their local family doctor. For the primary healthcare doctors, you just need a tablet or a phone and an internet connection. The app also works offline. It's very easy. You, the family doctors use it in their clinics or during the home visits when they travel. And the specialist whom with they are connected, again, they can just work from their desktop or their phone. The doctors are able to provide this treatment to the children in their villages, in their locality. So it really empowers them and builds their capacity to be able to connect to a specialist, get that expertise at a local level and disseminate it with, you know, to the children and the parents uh, and the caregivers. The telemedicine is not just, you know, like a phone call between a doctor or a patient. It's an entire system of electronic health records. Uh, so, digitization is what changes in the health uh, care system. Amazing project that we can uh, applaud and to um, receive this prize. All three of them came from very far away. First of all, from Kyrgyzstan, and we would like to very warmly thank Vitaly Shimatu, who is with us and who will be coming up on stage, who is the general uh, manager of the e health center in Kyrgyzstan and who is with Asabet Mamat, who is director of the information system for the e health center. Venez me rejoindre, voilà, venez me rejoindre. Please join uh, uh, us up on stage here. Pour recevoir ce prix, to receive this award, we can give them a round of applause. So they've traveled here from very, very far away to be with us here today in Lavor. We will also have Viva Barboon, who's from India and who is director of programs with Intelli Health and who will be joining us here on stage, Viva. Up on stage, please. Uh, je vous donne aussi également des micros. I will also be giving you microphones. Um, première question. To each of you, the first question. Pour vous, uh, for you. Please stay with me. For you, Vitalishi. Uh, Simplement votre sentiment. What is your feeling of being here, from coming here from Kyrgyzstan to receive this award? What are your feelings when you, as you receive this prize? Uh, so, sorry, can, can you please repeat? Yes, I, I just wanted to ask you what you're feeling today because you came from Kyrgyzstan here to be here in Lavoie with us to be awarded and receive this prize. So what's your feeling today? Good feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. C'est une bonne Une bonne illustration du théorème. Normalement, on a des courtes questions et des courtes réponses. Là, on est. Normally, we have short questions, short answers, and here we went straight uh, to the target. Also, a very simple question. What will this project and system change today for the areas involved in Kyrgyzstan? Implemented in our country, in five regions, and considering that our country is a mo mountains is there are many places are hard to reach uh, so that uh, solution mm. had a 
had an important impact of uh, uh, improving uh, of level level uh, public uh, 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 public access to healthcare. Est-ce que vous envisagez aujourd'hui d'étendre ce projet à l'ensemble Are you intending to extend this project to the entire country Yes, we have prepared a document of government uh, where we write a uh, telemedicine service. Uh, after this uh, document will be approved by uh, by, by Mm, state body, uh, after the state body, we will uh, we we are going to make a plan, action plan, of uh, of uh, expand expand telemedicine services in uh, throughout the country. Viva Barut, pour vous qui avez. Uh, Viva Barut, for you who developed this solution in India. We saw in the documentary that you're also present in other countries, in India, in Syria, in the Philippines. Is it necessary to adapt things a lot? Linguistic, cultural, process, processes in each country. Um, yes, so each country, each community, they have their own challenges and they have their own access barriers. Um, so it becomes necessary to have a solution that addresses that need. Uh, having said that, it is also important that, uh, you know, the technology, uh, there's not so much of customization that it takes months to, you know, develop and implement in different places. So uh, what we have done is our technology is architected and designed in such a way that it is, uh, you know, very quickly configurable and adaptable to different health conditions, right from uh, NCDs, non-communicable diseases, to infectious diseases, to mother and child care, to different user groups like uh, community health workers, uh, physicians, midwives, and also to local contexts like languages, um, different health-seeking behaviors, uh, different uh, acceptability in the providers and patients. Et dans le cas présent, par exemple, pour l'adaptation de votre... And in the present case, the adaptation of your technical solutions to Curtis, Dan, could you just give us two or three examples of adaptations that were necessary to adapt to the local health system? Uh, in Kyrgyzstan? Um, sure. So uh, while we were implementing this uh, uh, project in Kyrgyzstan, we had to ensure that the um, uh, clinical protocols were based on for children with disability. Um, so the Ministry of Health, they developed uh, uh, clinical protocols which were specific to uh, cerebral palsy, neonatal jaundice, and these were then, um, you know, uh, configured into the uh, technology. And uh, we had to, uh, you know, bring in the workflows that were integrated with the current health system in Kyrgyzstan. And uh, of course, they had to be in the local language that is Russian. Um, uh, but this configuration, uh, you know, it, uh, it just takes few weeks to do that. It is not a very, uh, you know, long, arduous journey that we start uh, in one year and end in another year. And that is why. Um, in such short period, we have been able to reach, uh, you know, five regions and are planning to expand soon. Effectivement, c'est une adaptation qui est extrêmement rapide. En yes, that's a very fast adaptation in just a few weeks. So, in a nutshell, what oppor development opportunities do you have for your technical platform? Do you have other countries uh, that you will be working with? Yes, uh, we are already working with uh, Syria. Uh, we've worked in Philippines, Kyrgyzstan, India. We have multiple projects. Um, I think the, uh, you know, the, the world knows the importance of telemedicine and, uh, you know, the COVID pandemic has clearly uh, shown that to all of us. Um, the, the question is not more towards opportunities, but how fast we can act on it. Because, you know, as per our last panel discussion, the technology is growing exponentially and it is here to stay whether we like it or not. Um, so it becomes our responsibility to ride the wave, make the best of it, and ensure that uh, the healthcare is, uh, you know, is accessible to those who need it the most. Congratulations to all three of you for this award. Maybe.
We can stand up to Jai Ganesh, and Jai Ganesh will be joining us up here from the Pierre Fab Expert Foundation, and above all, uh, Executive Director. So above all, give you the award, which is the most important thing, the award that you will be giving to Telemed KG. Maybe everybody can stand up. Stand up and come next to me. Come to stand next to me. Jai, just on. Jai, in just a few words, why did you choose to give this project the award? Uh, one of the criteria that we uh, used to evaluate this project was the context why telemedicine is very relevant and uh, important for Kyrgyzstan. Like as I think we also listened that it's a mountainous topography and the low population density and then a lot part of the population is also on the move, the nomads. So I think having brick and mortar facilities everywhere is uh, sort of not possible. And telemedicine literally standing for the distance medicine makes a huge relevance. That is one thing. And of course, the support and commitment that the government gave. The Deputy Minister of Health is also the in charge of digital digitalization uh, in the department. And uh, digitalization is one of the 10 strategic areas the government has identified. And then also considering the population of children with disabilities. I think if I remember right, during the evaluation, it was around 1.3% of the children are with disabilities and that could be prevented. And considering the population of I think about just more than 6 million, 6.5 million, so this is huge. And also the, uh, the patient to the specialist care ratio of uh, one is to 18,000. So considering all these scenarios, Telemedicine is very relevant for the country. So that was one of the criteria, and of course, the support that and the involvement, the political leadership and commitment is also very uh, helpful because it cannot stop at the pilot. Pilots have to scale. And then without um, measuring, as you say that, you know, without measuring, it cannot be managed. So I think, I, and then we hope from the foundation, this support for the project will be used for the evaluation and monitoring of the project and also for the strengthening of the nationwide rollout. I think I remember one of the requests also came from the deputy minister during the evaluation, which our director of programs from the foundation was there. And then I think the request was to also link up the identity uh, system in the application along with the identification mechanism, the unique ID identification mechanism from the, in the public health. So that's also a very important uh, means we could see the vision of the country and the relevance. Thank you. Jai, just in a few words, there is the award here, but it doesn't stop there. The foundation will also be providing support for this project. What concrete support will you be bringing? Yeah, I think the support will be more towards the evaluation and monitoring of the project because that is required to bring in further confidence of other donors and development partners to bring in the funding. I think if I understand right, there's also this um, uh, the vision for nationwide rollout. So for that, I think this support is like a seed grant. Consider this as a seed grant that will also bring in other partners. This is not going to be the only one, right? So there are going to be others and UNICEF is already supporting from what we know. So I think that will be one of the things. And then please, I think, uh, make every effort to make sure that the pilot actually rolls out in scale to, uh, as a national telemedicine program. Merci beaucoup, félicitations. Je vous laisse remettre ce prix. Thank you very much and congratulations. Please quelques, give this award and we will take a few photos. Et on peut les applaudir. And we can give them a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you. It's truly an honor to uh, receive uh, the Pierre Fabre Odis Award. Um, uh, I would like to thank the Ministry of Health uh, to you know, be a proactive partner to ensure that this reaches to the population that it needs. UNICEF, of course, for laying the foundational bricks. And most importantly, uh, the patients and the physicians who are utilizing the services, your trust and engagement is the true measure of success. And this award is not just acknowledgement of the achievement, uh, but also a responsibility. So we pledge that we will uh, leverage this uh, honor to uh, you know, further our impact. And thank you, Pierre Fabre Foundation, uh, for your commitment and recognizing our efforts. And together, let's make the world a uh, more equitable and healthier place. Merci beaucoup, Viba.
Thank you very much, Viva. Vitaly, would you like to add something? We agree with uh, Vipa, and we say uh, our thanks for uh, Pierre Fabre Foundation for inviting us, for uh, giving uh, so for our, uh, your, your support, and thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Please sit here. Deuxième projet Second project ce, ce matin, um, under the spotlight today is the FetoSense Sense project, which is of uh, a telemonitoring and from an Indian company, KNX, which is developing throughout Asia and also Africa. And let's have a look at this project. Fetosense basically measures fetal heart rate, uh, then fetal movements, uh, uterine contractions, mother's heart rate. Uh, if it is a twin baby, then twin baby's heart rate. We used domain knowledge, clinical expertise, as well as our competency in computer science to develop this algorithm and scoring system. Uh, which automatically analyzes the test data and produces the score. Out of these 300,000 patients, 52% of the patients uh, who were into fetal lysis have got diagnosed early on. And out of those early identified patients, almost 33% of the patients have escaped from high risk. So this is a remarkable impact that we, we could achieve just because of proliferation of fetal monitoring. So that's the FetoSense project. Let's give them a big round of applause. The 2023 uh, winner for the Pierre Fabre Award. So we have the Kukali, who is co founder of uh, Karenex. Please join me up on stage here, Aditya. And he came with his FetoSense case. Here's a microphone. Okay. Bah. Montrez-nous alors un petit peu. Let's have a look at uh, what's in your magic case so that we can understand what it contains. Can you tell us just you have in your magic suitcase here? Yeah? Sure. It's a it's a life-saving device basically. <laughs> uh, so as you can see it's a portable technology. Uh, early on a uh, lot of fetal monitoring devices were available. Uh, however uh, Either they uh, would not work on field because of uh, dependence on electricity, uh, wired nature of devices and all that. We removed all those limitations and made it compact so that even a frontline health worker can use. Second, the results that we obtained uh, earlier, doctor used to interpret the result. And there was a lot of subjectivity because the results would get printed on the paper and doctor has to eyeball through it in order to know what is going on with the baby. We removed that limitation using AI so that a frontline health worker can do the test reliably and can understand results there itself. So that decision making becomes uh, very powerful at a ground level and the high risk patients could be triaged at a tertiary facility early on. So that is the innovation. Jai insisted a few instants on the importance. So Jai was underlining the importance of scaling up a few moments ago. We see that this project you've developed in India is now being exported to many countries throughout Asia and Africa. How do you adapt to local specificities? Sure. Uh, so um, one of the question uh, in terms of scalability of any AI-based solution is about demographic uh, differences. And Professor, um, uh, early on in, in her talk, mentioned that uh, we needed to get data from local country in order to train the model. For us, it was little easier because our data is one dimensional, not images. It's a trace of fetal heart rate. And we could get global data available openly uh, through a lot of publications early on. 
So we relied on that data to train the model in local context so that accuracy is maintained. Second, certain localization, such as uh, language, uh, such as uh, the operating procedure of the device remains uh, universal because it's a very um, uh, like every gynecologist or every frontline and uh, A&M would know how to perform the test. Uh, we did not face a lot of problems in terms of training. So that made it simple enough so that they can use it on ground. And technology itself was little simple than, than images, for say. Bravo pour ce projet Fetosense. Congratulations for this uh, Fetosense uh, project. And Sarah Lesso will be coming up to give this award from the uh, Lavenir Foundation. Sarah, please come and join us up here. We can give her a round of applause too. Je vous donne, je vous donne un. So, before you give this award, Sarah, you can uh, recall that there is already a, a partnership between uh, Pierre Fabre and uh, his foundation, L'Avenir. Yes, the Foundation L'Avenir supports supplied research for the benefit of patients, and we've been doing this for more than 35 years. Or. It was created in 87 by French Mutual Insurance Association and has supported more than 2,400 projects. Since 2017, Pierre Fabre uh, Foundation and Foundation L'Avenir our partners in a digital fund for uh, promotion of uh, health projects based on uh, digital technology. And we support the prize of the Observatory of E-Health in countries of the South to promote the health of the future by learning from experiences in countries of the South. And this year, we're very proud to give this award to Care and X. Uh, uh, presented here uh, for the Fetosense uh, project. So what do you like the most about this project? Well, the Avenir Foundation, among the projects uh, supported, wishes to support e-health uh, projects, in particular projects that use artificial intelligence, as underlined on many occasions this morning. It is a precious basis for connected tools that we can then use for uh, as decision-making tools uh, for doctors, physicians, and the Fetosense project is totally aligned with our uh, values. It is a tool uh, that uh, is based on artificial intelligence and that gives a turnkey solution that uh, reduces mortality among infants in regions with limited resources and it doesn't require any particular consumables and can be used easily on the ground and it has already enabled an essential examination to be accessible to the greatest numbers possible by detecting uh, fetal distress and and uh, avoiding voilà premature birth. This is the award to give for the Care and X company. Please uh, give this award, and we will take some photos, give them a big round of applause for this uh, uh, award uh, uh, given to Fetosense, the winner of 2023 of the eHealth Observatory in countries of the South. So thank you to both of you. Please take a seat. Just a, a few minutes before we have lunch, because... Uh, I, oh, sorry, I do apologize. Please take the floor. Sure. Uh, so I just wanted a couple of minutes. So uh, first of all, this award is not for me alone or for my company. It's for everyone who has supported my project till now. And 1,000 plus hospitals who are using it on a daily basis. Um, on a daily basis, more than 2,000 pregnant women get screened through Fitosense and we could actually save lives on field. So I want to like give th this away to everybody who has contributed to the project. I am merely a representative, uh, but the hard work belongs to them. So for them, I think uh, this award is well deserved. Thank you so much, Foundation, for supporting me. Merci beaucoup. Please stay with us. Adilkia, qui est venu de Bombay, de Mumbai. So we're going to come from Mumbai to receive this award today. So I was saying we just have a few minutes left before we uh, break for lunch. It's now or never if you have any questions or comments to, uh, with regard to our nominees. And I would encourage those who are following us remotely, if you have any comments, please do send them to us. We have two, three minutes. I don't know if there are any hands being raised in the audience. Any comments or maybe some congratulations? Or uh, this question is to Aditya. Mm. So, how, like, what components of, like, what percent of the components that uh, is like you could source it locally, and then also the other thing is like, how about the support to the kit? Like, uh, is there an annual maintenance contract? Because I've seen telemedicine projects, especially a simple, uh, you know, few dollar adapter, power adapter, can cause the whole program to stop. But this involves a little more. So I was involved in something similar 
for uh, vital sense tele uh, telemetry. So this kit will involve some maintenance and then upkeep. So you also have this program built in. That's the uh, question that yeah, I have. That's a very good question. Uh, because uh, even after developing innovation, taking it to customers and on field is a really different challenge. And we learned it through experiences. Uh, because uh, as far as uh, delivery of the product is concerned, the continuous support for the lifetime of the product is very essential. Uh, and typically, when we see in medical field, uh, after a while, after a while, when it is being used by multiple people on ground, uh, certain aspects which we won't um, assume early on will come up. And this is exactly what happened with Fetosense early on. Uh, the reason why we made it so portable and modular is because even though certain component is not working on field, we could detect it using software. And instead of repairing, we can just dispatch that component itself to the customers. And in that manner, we have developed an annual maintenance system uh, through which you can replace it unlimited amount of time. So for governments especially, they require like five years of maintenance. And we provide it in the contract that for next five years, even though certain component goes bad, we would be able to early detect early on and replace it within eight days. That is the guarantee that we provide to the customers. When it is about uh, deploying it to other countries, uh, we partner with local device manufacturers uh, who have good network uh, among the doctors and we actually support them with the supply and everything. So that the service for the end consumer customer doesn't get affected. And this is very good point because um, ultimately after a while, new pro problems and challenges will emerge, which we don't take into consideration early on. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions, monsieur? Oui, merci. Yes, thank you. And I would also like to thank all of the speakers. And I would like to join the others to congratulate you. My question. These are devices that are um, suited to Asia and elsewhere. But uh, is, are things the same in Africa? I come from Chad, where I participate in the e-health uh, operation. In our country, a lot of women have caesareans, and a lot of uh, women have miscarriages. That's the state of things in our country. So if we have a partner who will support us to unroll this, these devices in Africa, there is uh, internet problems, connectivity problems. So how can you adapt to a context which is slightly different from Asia? Thank you. Uh, sure, that's a very good question. Um, actually, the feeling is both ways, uh, because we also tried to scale it up in other countries, but just because we could not bring um, partners together or um, uh, could not have capacity to scale it up, we couldn't do it the faster way. Uh, one thing you mentioned about miscarriages and uh, a lot of um, uh, prematurity. Uh, in the video also I mentioned about a study which we have done in order to reduce prematurity. Uh, what essentially happens is when you have such a tool on ground in order to screen it uh, later on in, in the month when you expect delivery, you get m additional data points in order to prolong delivery. And in the last month itself, even though you prolong it by say five, six days, it gives additional time for a fetus to grow in the, in the womb. And that actually does the magic. So our idea is to help doctor take decision on prolonging the delivery so that number of C-sections will reduce. And that has created an impact in India. And that is evident through our publications. So we want to replicate the same system across Africa because we understand that the context is similar, even in Southeast Asia. It's just that our organization is small, and that is why we couldn't do that so far. But if we get good network, uh, if we get good supporters, we definitely want to scale it up. So th that, that is the mutual feeling that we share. Merci beaucoup. Merci à tous Thank you very much. Thank you to all of the winners. Congratulations. We can give them another round of applause. Up, 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 up. Ah, il y avait une toute dernière, alors. Allez, ah, there was a final question or comment. Allez, en deux petites, allez, deux petites minutes, une Two minutes, question, allez, final question. Merci, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Je vais faire rapidement. I will be brief. 
We are two startup creators. Currently in Africa, we're looking at how to create an ecosystem to encourage the emergence of new startups in the field of e-health. And uh, the questions I always ask uh, startup creators is what is the decisive moment in from the creation of the idea to today, which meant that your startup today is able to scale up or not? Is it somebody you met, somebody you knew? Is it money? What exactly meant that your startup actually um, has been successful? Uh, so I'll go first. Uh, to my experience, none of the metrics matters until and unless your customer is satisfied. Uh, and that is the stage we call product market fit, where customers themselves uh, give demands about what extra they want with the product and tell them tell proactively that they are very happy and this is actually making their lives easy. So that is the checkpoint that we feel is, is the most important checkpoint in any startup's journey. Uh, you can get funding from n number of organizations, you can get n number of recognitions, you can get applauded a lot about research and everything, but until and unless the end beneficiary, the end user testifies it, I think nothing matters. And this has been, uh, so we learn it in a very hard way because early on it's all about like progressing about your project. But when we, you get to that stage, I think that is the right point from where you can take off. Viba, in a few words, just in a few words, please. Yeah, um, I think I agree, uh, Aditya, with what you said. It's ultimately the health outcomes that matter for us in our case is are the patients getting better? Are the providers uh, who are using our technology satisfied and uh, are, uh, you know, uh, accepting telemedicine as a form of caregiving? Uh, it was... Uh, uh, to be honest, pre-COVID, it was difficult uh, for us to, you know, convince providers and patients that telemedicine is, uh, you know, like a form of caregiving. But uh, COVID was a litmus test for us. And since then, uh, you know, there's no looking back. So um, the change in the uh, ecosystem and the focus on uh, the users, the providers and the patient is what matters. Merci beaucoup pour ces explications et sur ce thème passionnant. Thank you very much for this explanation. And uh, we could have stayed here for hours talking about this very interesting thing. But we're going to have a short break after this first part of the conference of the Observatory of eHealth in the country of the South. But of course, our work is not stopping there. This afternoon, we will be continuing to talk in particular about ethics and human rights uh, within the scope of artificial intelligence. And you will also discover the other winners of the Observer this year and the position of the World Health Organization on this uh, uh, question. So we will be back here at 2.20 p.m. after the lunch break. Uh, so that's...